Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor, with Valentine's Day right upon us here. Let's look at some values for vintage Valentine cards. Everything you're going to see here goes for at least 50 bucks or higher. There are some phenomenal cards out there. This is just a handful of the ones that sell for a good chunk of change. So let's look at those right now. So when we talk about Valentines, most people remember these sorts when they were a kid in grade school. Now, some of those can go for some decent money depending on the character or what type they are. With Valentines as well, the older is usually the more valuable ones. The larger are also the more valuable ones. Sometimes it's just the design that makes them worth something. Now, this one here is a double interest one. It has a witch on it. So Halloween collectors will want this one as well talks about the magic potion very unique piece but it's most obviously a valentine's this is one of those mixed result ones here even with christmas sometimes you'll find christmas ornaments of halloween characters which was a common thing back in the day so 71 dollars for this one with 24 bids now we're going to work our way up this is the cheapest one i'm going to show you today all of these are sold straight off of ebay there are other sites and platforms you can sell these on as well on etsy they do very well you can even sell some of the vintage ones on amazon in the collectible section now again topic is a huge considering factor when looking at the value this has dice on it rather interesting something you just don't see gambling related items for valentine's day it's that crossover interest that really brings people in. You can see the interesting aspect of this. Even if these are used, they still do sell. Even without the envelope, they still sell. If you have the envelope and they're unused, they will go for more money no matter what. Now again, Topic has something to do with it, as does the construction of it. This is basically a pop-up. And let's slide so you can see it from other angles. It's a full-fledged pop-up with the honeycomb expandable tissue paper inside inserts to it. So really nice example here. This would have went in an envelope just like any other thing as you can see it folded right here. This one went for $80. For those in Patreon, this is similar to the one that I repaired not too long ago in that repair video. The same basic concept, a little hard to repair something like this, but uh, I may show that in another video in the future though. Very interesting concept on these in general. I love making these sorts of things. I do do pop-ups like this on my other channel, The Art Professor. So I love paper. I create it. I buy it. I sell it. It's a huge area to make some good money in. Now, mechanical, movable Valentine's cards are a whole nother field. There are people that just collect mechanical and movable cards, whether they be Valentine's, Christmas, Halloween, whatever the case, even some of the postcards of the day have mechanics to them. Very nice example. This has a Ouija board on it as well. So the topic has, again, double interest. Ouija, mystical, mystics, the whole works is in there. Very nice example here. Now back to another pop-up. This is a very nice one here. It folds out and makes a very unique design, as you can see here. This is the fad. This is what was very popular back in the day. These were outrageously expensive for the time frame. These were all hand-glued together, one at a time to make these. So a regular, say, postcard in about 1910 may have been a penny to three cents. Really fine hand watercolored ones may have been five cents. Some of these could have been a quarter, maybe even over that at the time. So value-wise, these were always expensive, even when they were first made. This one dates to about the 1920s, $89 on this one. Now, my favorite category of Valentines are some of the character and fantasy related ones. This is Raggedy Ann in this one here. They date it to about 1940. I would probably have to agree this is most definitely 1940s. This is not a postcard. This is a true Valentine card. $91.91 with eight bids. Now, here's another nice one. This has silk ribbon on it. It has some attached die cuts to the face. It's an internal one. This is, again, a little newer one. It has some gilt on it, more like like uh, Dresden gilt around the edges of it. Very fanciful card, $100 on this one. Used, unused, envelopes or not, as I said, these will always sell if you get the right ones. Just like any other category, maybe 95% of these aren't worth a ton of money, but it's that other 5% that will get you the money. We've sold Valentines for hundreds of dollars in the past. Now, many times these are hand watercolored, and this is a fine example of that. As you can see, it has been hand painted. It has some nice fine details, some added die cuts, as I said. That's why this one is worth so much money. 
Now here's another mechanical card. This one you can see went for 150 bucks. This is very unique. It's dated 1925 and it's a stand up, a standee, made to stand on a table just as you see it right now. Now this one, the eyes move and that is almost always one of the higher dollar ones. Most people like the ones with the moving eyes. So just a fine example. This again has multi-category interest, cat collectors, Valentine collectors, the mechanical paper collectors, Inferium collectors. There's just a fine group of people that love these sorts of things. Now here's a favorite line of mine. This is a De La Rue. And I've talked about De La Rue many times. If you've watched my videos for any length of time, you've seen me sell many of these. Most De La Rues of a certain style or certain series go for some good money. Some De La Rue cards can go for almost a thousand dollars. They made playing cards all the way up into the 20th century. You will still find them. I love these sorts of things, especially the fantasy related. Most of the artists on these are very well known also this is a british company they were a supplier to the king and queen of england at one time if i am not mistaken kind of along the lines of Raphael tuck they have been around since i believe the 1850s or 60s this one has fairies this is a true fantasy card from way back in the day as you can see just a fine example of a victorian card they don't have a date, but this would be circa 1875, 78, somewhere in that range, based on all of the other ones I had and the serial number on this, which is 304. This is just an excellent example of early fantasy style cards. This one went for 170 bucks, basically, in U.S. dollars. Now, another area of Valentine cards are topical collectors. Now, a topical collector would collect something all related to one specific topic. These are all scouts, Boy Scout related of some sort. All together, there's 24 cards, $175. It's an instant collection for any Boy Scout collector. This would be bought by somebody who is in scouting, someone who collects Boy Scout items, and Valentine collectors as well. There's some very interesting and early ones in here, dating to, I would say, Probably the early days, Bad Powell days, the 20s even, for sure in this lot. Nice examples. Now, as I said earlier, Raphael Tuck is another one of those companies that you should always be looking for. These show up. There's quite a few different ones of these mechanical ones. The arms, the legs move as well on this one. There's a scarecrow, which I've had. There's a, I guess you would call it a bum. There's a girl. There's a couple other boys in this same line of figures. They're fairly tall. Some of them I've seen ranging from 12 to, say, 18 inches on this. Most of them in good condition will go for a few hundred dollars. This one sold for 220 dollars without issue right off the bat from what I see. This would be marked on the back, Raphael Tuck and Sons. It will say RTS somewhere on the back on an easel. That's usually the mark you will find on these. Now this next set here were released as foldies. There's a bunch of these. There's Superman, there's Marvel characters which are extremely scarce. I picked these because it has Babe Ruth in it. Now, I always get excited when I see the Valentine Foldy cover on these, just waiting to see what's on the inside. I haven't run into a Superman. Those would be some of the top ones on my list, as well as the Babe Ruth you see here. They did them for most comic book characters. There's a whole set of these. These are from 1963. Now, there's also a set of Topps Funny Valentine cards, trading cards from the same era that would have been handed out as Valentines as well. And this is from that same basic line of, of card toys from that day. Nice example of this set here, $285. Now these flip and they make different designs on the other side of the cards as well. Very unique design on these. These are well sought after. You can sell them individually as well as as a set. Sets will always sell for more money, very obviously. Now, as I said earlier, superhero ones are always sought after. These are from the heyday of the superheroes coming out in comic book form. This is obviously an original 1940s Wonder Woman. It's a typical example of what you will find in most Wonder Woman comics of the day. It's a movable or a mechanical one that opens up as well. $400 for this one. Superman, any of the earlier superheroes will go for some insane amounts of money when you get these. Always want the envelopes, of course, but even without the envelope, this is a high dollar item in any collector's field. Wonder Woman collectors, comic book collectors, Valentine collectors, paper collectors, all of those sorts of people will want this. And if it's made by a specific company, say Hallmark or something along that line, it could also increase the value because then you have Hallmark collectors after these as well. Very, very, very fine example here. 
And lastly, at $412 is an 1850s Valentine's card. Now, this would have been made. Somebody put these pieces together and hand-colored the fruit on it as well. It's a semi-mechanical one. All these little parts are glued together. I've made similar ones. I'm going to make a similar one in one of my future videos on The Art Professor as well. So if you like this sort of thing, I do this a lot. I've got some Valentine's Christmas ornaments. I show you how to make pop-up books. We do some foundry work, and you're going to also get to see some more melting of metals and things along that line, too. It has paper lace. It has a glass mirror on it. It has some actual three-dimensional flowers as well. Very, very fine example. This is a larger one at 10 inches as well. Most of these were pretty small. Most all of these were not this fanciful. This was an expensive card. Somebody had to hand make this. This one card could have taken a few hours to put together, possibly. These are just a few of the examples of cards that will sell. There are a ton of Valentine's cards out there that are worth nothing, as I said, but if you get the right ones, you can have a ton of change in your pocket. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell your friends. Jed. Some party, weren't it? When I shoved myself away from the table, I figured I'd never want to eat again, but now... Well, set yourself down, and I'll fix you up with some Kellogg's cornflakes and things. Mm, doggies. You know, Granny, I think you're beginning to like Beverly Hills. It's got some good things, but I miss the feel of winter coming on. I'd like to see some trees with their leaves all red and gold like they're supposed to be. I'd like to see that little deer of Ellie's. Used to come around every morning. Wouldn't you like that, Jed? Sure would, Granny. <laughs> I'd also like some Kellogg's cornflakes. Kellogg's best to you.